So now he's trying to get her away, right? He's trying to escape with Laura, but Lucifer starts doing shit talk from inside her womb. Yeah, he's doing some fucking, some satanic shit talk. It should have had to be baby talk style from Lucifer here, I thought. <laughs> oh my God, oh, the best comment. Look who's talking style. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yes. <laughs> So, you think to stop me, do you? <laughs> oh, is this how I talk right now? <laughs> oh, no. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamecast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, because if I ever wind up in hell, I want to be practiced up. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. This is the perfect film. This is the platonic, yep. god-awful <laughs> movie. I mean, perfect for, it's like made for this podcast. I think you might be right, yeah. And sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Open and ready to explore this film together. Right. Okay. <laughs> so tell us, Heath, what is the perfect platonic god awful movie? It is The Devil Conspiracy. It's the story of some Christian guy, whoever wrote this, saying to himself, What if we found cum on the Shroud of Turin? <laughs> and what if that cum fell into the wrong hand? <laughs> <laughs> and he made a movie about that. Yeah, he did. He did make a movie about that. You know what I like about this one compared to like some of our other bad, bad movies we've watched is like when you watch a Donald James Parker flick, right? People are harmed by the things Donald James Parker thinks and believes, right? It's bad for the world. This is insane and stupid, but like no one's walking around being like, you got to be careful about trying to raise a Mozart because before you know it, they're going to be kidnapping ladies and the angel Michael will be the only thing standing between us and the legions of hell. Right. No, th this movie is to Christianity as like the Marvel Thor trilogy is, you know, to, to fucking Scandinavian mythology. <laughs> right. So, Eli, I have to ask, of course. How bad was this movie? Well, if you're tired of the same old stop Satan before he's born as the Antichrist horror canards and you long for a movie written by, I don't know, Wes Craven and Bill Donahue of the Catholic League on alternating pages. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. You will love this movie. All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst Nothing matters in the movie because God and the movie stumbles upon that several times and just like deflates its entire plot. And then is like, yep. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to keep going, though. I know this doesn't ah, nothing matters, but God, we're going to keep going. Might as well be on his 20 for this movie. It's just like, no, I assure you there are stakes because he's on his 20 and he's got 10 left and yeah, he's, right. he's doing a full shift today. So we're not even allowed to ask him to clock me again <laughs> early. It's really important. Yeah, no, there's like, that's the universal problem in Christian fiction, right? Because like, usually if you have an overpowered character, you can somehow sideline them, right? Like somehow Professor X gets kidnapped. So now they have to do it without him or whatever. You can't do that with God. But fucking Kevin Smith did it with dogma but like you generally speaking can't do that with god so that's a problem <laughs> god's been on his 15 for like 2000 years i guess in the yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Now that, yeah. Now that you mention it so i was gonna go with best worst profane devil fuck yes you are so good okay so because like you know you the devil he the devil uses swear words because he's the devil and shit and you can do that and still make him badass and devilly right you know you will be mired in the shit of your forefathers for a thousand whatever or whatever but this devil will just be like well fuck balls just <laughs> fuck balls god <laughs> damn oh, shit okay fucking balls his very first line is yes shit but, shit. Well, <laughs> but yes, in that exact intonation, shit. Like beans. Yeah. The devil and my wife yeah. like fall my the exact same way. dropped an egg. Yes. yes. Exactly. <laughs> he also, in case there's ever any stakes in the movie, he swears like an 11 year old to make sure that they, those don't stick around for even a right. second, right? Yes. Fucking Lucifer, you will never fuck you, Craig. Okay. <laughs> well. 
I had a Not whole a speech big actually that Can't I really to do. do a monologue. <laughs> so, and speaking of great speeches, I'm going to go with best worst hero. He's so useless. He is the most useless. He- I could not begin to tell you his powers. All the word I have is electricity. Yep. Yep. <laughs> There's, but he doesn't electrify anything ever. No. Nope. I had blue as his power. The color. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, that makes, makes a lot more sense. Mm hmm. <laughs> That's a more apt description. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know how there's foods out there that's like candies that are just blue flavored? That's right, his yeah. power. You're pretty <laughs> sure it's raspberry, but you're not sure. Is your power frost Gatorade, man? I don't understand <laughs> what you do. Listener, I know you're going to think I'm making this up. The protagonist of this movie is chained up for the last quarter of the movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And not just once. That's the thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you, we've got some hellish depths to descend to for this one. So while we fetch the elevator, we're going to take a quick break. But we'll be back in a minute with all the lazy ass nonsense that is the devil conspiracy. Uh, Smash. Pass. (laughs) Smash. Oh, come on. Definitely Uh, smash. I don't think that's how you play with Pokemon cards. I mean, what else could it be? Hey, guys, what are you up to? Playing Pokemon cards. Really? What, what what happened to your New Year's resolutions, Heath? Aren't you supposed to learn a a, a handstand on a motorcycle? On a motorcycle, yeah. Uh, here's the thing about that. And and Eli, it's, you were gonna invent a new goldfish, whatever the hell that means. Right. Are those both gone already? Yeah, I Kinda was unclear gone. on what a goldfish was. Well, don't you have any resolutions left? I mean, I did want to save some money. Oh yeah, me too. Well, good news. Luckily, I have a 100% guaranteed way to save you money this year. Just switch to Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. Wait, wait, wait. $15 a month? What's the catch? There is no catch. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your own phone number along with your existing contacts. I don't know. Have you actually tried it? I sure have. I switched over when they became a sponsor, and I get the same amazing service as my old plan, but for way less money. All right, Noah, I'm in. Where do I sign up? To get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Thanks. No problem. So can I can I play with you guys? Sure. Uh, smash or pass? I, I don't think that's how you play Pokemon. Thank you. How else could you play it then? N- well, not that. You guys are no help at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. I call this meeting to order of the horror movie writers of Hollywood. Are you guys ready to write another horror movie? <sighs> yeah. I guess. Another I day. Another dollar. Okay. Let's spin the wheel. And this month is... Stop Satan Before He Comes to Earth. Oh, come on. It's not even October, man. Just did that. Hey, guys. No whining about what the wheel lands on. So, what do we got? Okay. Okay. So, uh, what if a cult of Satanists is trying to bring Satan to Earth? Okay, sure, of course. Uh, and I, a, a priest has to stop him. Okay, not a cop this time. Okay, uh, what's new? What's different? What are we? What are we changing? <sighs> I don't know. Maybe. Okay, maybe he he clones Jesus to do it. It's part of the plan. I mean, sure, but like, I, I can't show that on screen. Like, what? What's the priest doing? Is he stopping the cloning? Is he- uh, wait, oh, he could be um like a like a an angel. Careful, Brian. You're raising our budget now. No, I need this. No, to just be... like an angel possessing a human body. No, like wings or angel powers or anything. Okay, okay. That that I think we can do. Uh, and what's the twist? Uh, do we need a twist? Can we just do it? Mm. Hey, hey. Pope's Exorcist got us three more movies, man. Okay. Three. What if he's uh, he's born a preemie? He's like mostly in. Nick you. Okay. You know what? We've done a lot today. I can tell we're all tired. 
Let's just keep preemie Satan for now, unless we think of something significantly dumber. We'll think of something significantly dumber. Yeah. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown. We're going to open up on a voiceover telling us the story of Satan's fall. In case we weren't familiar with who the character Satan is and what his motivation's <laughs> all about. Now, to be fair, they do have their own spins on it. For instance, heaven is apparently in space in outer space yeah it's a turquoise galaxy yes yeah. it's uh -huh. uh, the urantia book take on the story it, yeah <laughs> really yeah and hell does appear to be in the earth's crust in this mythology yes yeah, so, yeah well we know that because we watch satan actually like fall from heaven into earth's atmosphere we watch him flame up on re-entry apparently he's going very fast and then fall through Earth into the hell that is in its interior. <laughs> yes. The, the mantle, the core, it's not clear. He's not in like liquid nickel, but like. Yeah, yeah. Not, not super clear. <laughs> and it's lit up there pretty well, too. So that's not it's not clear where that's coming from either. There's wind as well, which is very confusing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And this is where we get his first line. <laughs> I know we teased this at the beginning, but the first thing <laughs> Satan says, I think it's the first spoken word in the movie. It's not the voiceover. Yeah. That isn't the voiceover is shit. <laughs> yes. The angel Michael lands behind him and he goes, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he tries to crawl away, but Michael, the archangel, he chains him up with a lightsaber. Right? Yeah. yeah. He's got an angel sword. I thought at first Michael was like hell HR already there being like, <laughs> Lucifer, you have to do. Fucking orientation now. Here's the pattern. <laughs> we need an I-9 from you. <laughs> what? Come on. It's all on my job application. I hate yeah. this. So, yeah, but Michael gives him one last chance. He's like, hey, do you want to say you're very, very sorry and go back to heaven? And Satan's like, no, I would rather stay here chained in hell for eternity. I already have like the demon rock face. I feel like I'll look weird. And It'd be weird <laughs> if I'm just walking around up there. Hey, Grandma Runfola, congratulate. Oh, why do I? Well, I defied God and I got in a fight with Michael. Sure, You'll sure. meet him. He's by the blowjob fountain. You got a lot of like <laughs> evil wardrobe stuff going on for... For heaven. Well, you know, I sort of changed the whole you outfit wanted, when yeah, I thought I was going to overthrow God. Okay. Not a lot of places to shop up here, it turns yeah, out. Right, right. <sighs> I love it too. It's because it, like one of my first notes in here is it's like those Hindu cartoons, right? Because we're watching Michael like chain Satan into the interior of the earth or whatever. It's like, yeah, when you once you have to visualize these stories, it's obvious how silly they are. Right. right now, because now the questions come up like, okay, so is Satan running hell and all the demons on a three foot lead? If he yes. ever gets too bossy to the damned, just like step a couple feet back and be like, yeah, but like, get me. I'm over here and I can touch yeah. this right. rock. They, man. They, they what do you think? Chalk circle, but then he erases it and puts it a little closer and then he gets them. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so also, we learned that all the Satan's, Satanists and the demons on earth, they joined forces to build a sweet fort. <laughs> right where Satan <laughs> fell through the earth. They, they built a demon fort on that very spot because it's the gateway to hell, which because it's a hole in this movie is just a physical <laughs> hole yes. that goes to yeah. hell. Maybe you don't build a big like demon castle on it. I feel like it's a Streisand effect type of thing. Right. For the rest yes. Of the world. Sure. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, okay. And then we get this. We So we go to Turin, Italy, we get this stupid ass lazy fucking news voice that's going to introduce us to what's going on. The news comes in to, to tell us that the the Shroud of Turin is going to be on display. Yeah. And for those of our listeners who don't know, the, the Shroud of Turin is fake. And it's also, I think, Christianity's most hilarious fake because they're like, <laughs> no, no, we put it on him when he was a dead and he made a... Eh? Blood snow angel that looks yeah. a little bit like a dude. <laughs> it's a very serious place that can see this. The theory is that Jesus made like a, a photograph of him being resurrected on the thing. That is one of the theories. Yes, the great white light that like beamed yeah. out of him when he was resurrected imprinted I'm just him. Jesus like doing a selfie, like Jesus planking and doing yeah, a selfie. Right. Of, yeah, <laughs> doing the peace <laughs> sign, then a wago tongue. <laughs> Jesus, do another one. Yeah. You're making your mother and I very upset. It's so, <laughs> And maybe women who are or aren't here. So, and, and this is where we meet our main character, Laura. She's an art student who's going into the cathedral where 
the shroud is being displayed, but not to see the shroud. She's there to see some statue. She's got a yeah. friend who is a priest who works there, who I just have as, as Father Mansplain for reasons that'll be obvious by the end of the scene. I have yeah. him as Father Macaroni. Father Maraconi, I think is his name. Yeah. Her her name is Laura Milton, by the oh, way. Oh, which is very clever. Which is very, very subtle. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh -huh. so, yeah, she's going into this museum or whatever, and they have extra security because the shroud is there. And we know now that like Lucifer is doing some kind of plan. So I'm just picturing Lucifer like like putting his flame sword in the plastic dish to go yeah, around right. the metal detector. <laughs> right. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're stopping Noah and patting him down. Come on, that guy's yeah, got a flame can... sword. Yeah, right. <laughs> so she walks by. We hear one of the uh, like, I, I don't know, museum guides or whatever is bringing a group in and they call the Shroud of Turin, quote, the world's most famous object and its most sacred Okay. I don't think okay. that's, think that's correct. They also call it the Shroud of Christ because mm -hmm. I guess they're in Turin, so it's like it's food and it's the Shroud, right? Right, right. yeah. yeah exactly. exactly. Right, right. Here in Turin, we do not do the ATM machine, okay? We just <laughs> it's a sheet, it's just, just our... a shroud. Shroudy if you're nasty. So <laughs> <laughs> And then, so the priest turns to Laura because the movie needs exposition here and explains what the Shroud of Turin is. And he says, he's like, you know, well, we believe that Jesus died and he was buried and he descended to the dead. And then on the third day, he rose. And I'm like, yeah, man, she probably knows. I mean, I feel was, like she's aware of the myth. Yeah. And yes, by the way, the movie says buried. So there's six races of people. There's six different <laughs> colors. <laughs> the best one. Are you, are you ranching? So... Uh, you're you're really narrow casting on this one. I, I will say exactly. Yeah, the Urantia people, people, people the in the audience are loving. Are this. loving. This. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So so she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yada yada. Rose from the dead. Uh, fucking photograph blanket. Anyway, you brought me here to see a statue, and he's like, yeah, sure. Let's go look at the statue. Yeah, and they look at the statue. They discuss evil for a little bit. I love this conversation, right? She's drawing Satan. She's like, yes, but isn't it a fascinating metaphor that evil isn't some external mystical creature? And the priest has to be like, um, no, it is. It's um, God's ex-best friend who got in a fist fight with him. What a dangerous thing to disagree with. But yeah, he disagrees. <laughs> yeah. And we should point out too that like this Laura character, like for the first 11 times that we see her, we have to establish that she's an atheist. She should just keep turning to people and going like, right, but angels are fake bullshit that isn't real though. Right. And like I wrote my notes here. I'm like, okay, as a guy who co-hosts several atheist podcasts, Laura, you're talking about your atheism too much. Right. Yeah. I wouldn't Tone mention down. it this often. Yeah. Laura Milton, relax. <laughs> There's also this great moment where she's like, he's like, I've seen such evil things. And she's like, so have I, foreshadowing, foreshadowing. And he says, I love this line. He goes, the devil is the only way I could make sense of it. And I wrote in my notes, I mean, yeah, man, that's called being stupid. Right. I think microwaves make water <laughs> hot with bounce, bounce, bounce. But I don't like tell that to people. <laughs> okay, but... That's much better. That's close to what is happening. It is right. yeah, definitely yeah, like closer, closer than more how Catholics accurate. describe than evil. Anything. Yeah, no, that's yeah, fair. Yeah. That's fair. In this story. Strong first place. Yeah. So like he's like, okay, well, I guess you want to be alone with the statue because you're an art student and you have to add like art at it. And she's like, well, obviously I have to art at yeah, it. Yeah, I have to be alone also. Is there a pop scare here? Uh, we don't Jeez, know. I feel like the movie was not sure whether or not they had a pop scare planned. <laughs> so... <laughs> All right, but she spends the all day there, right? We cut to it's evening. The last tour group is arriving at the museum, and the last person in the last tour group is wearing a mysterious hooded cloak. <laughs> hey, okay, if you have, like, beefed up security, I want somebody to be like, hey, are you, are you fucking evil? Because yeah, you're, you're wearing, wearing a an evil cloak. cloak. <laughs> wait, wait, There's smoke wait, wait, wait. coming out of your eyes. What's happening? Before you stop that flaming lady, the woman behind her has a phone camera pointed at the screen. <laughs> Ma'am, no cam, no pictures. Yeah, in right, right. No pictures. Yeah. So we cut back to Laura. She's still sketching the uh, the statue and shit. And she hears a weird noise off to the side. So she has to go check and see if there's a jump scare over there, right? There isn't. It's a crow. But <laughs> it's a Satan crow who's in on it with the cloaked figure, right? This is, it turns out it's an old lady. It's an old lady in the cloak. And we see her sneaking up behind Laura. She has to get the spear sword from the statue she's sketching. Right. 
And so she employed a Satan crow to distract Laura long enough for her to do that. Right. Okay. Because in the movie, according to this movie, not only are angels and devils and all that stuff real, their stuff that's in art is the real stuff. Is the real <laughs> stuff, apparently. <laughs> yeah. That's what they're saying. Or at the very least that they like that they've been regularly sharpening the statue's spear mm -hmm. at this and cathedral. <laughs> made it removable. Yeah. <laughs> I did enjoy the crow though, because it's definitely it's an Eli sketch crow. He's doing a bit. So like, he's doing a bit. For sure. They they do the little pop scare with the crow. Crow flies away. But not right away. First, she like argues with the crow for a while. And it's just like she does. Go away. Kaka. Go no, go away. Kaka. Go away. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what this is a reference to. He's doing my way. He's doing my way. Okay, the crow's calling a doodly doo. I don't know. This is it. We're in too deep. <laughs> so yeah, so the old lady sneaks up behind her and steals the the spear thing. And I have to point out, okay, so it's a spear, but it's a spear that's got like a cross on the top of it. So from a distance, and this movie's shot in the fucking dark constantly, from a distance and in the dark, it looks like it's a really big sword. Yes. So it looks like this old lady is just fucking cloud strife in her way no the yeah, yeah. Right. She, if the kingdom hearts come along she's ready to fuck up donald duck let me tell you <laughs> so all right so laura goes to leave but the door's locked and that's when she sees off in the distance old satan lady beheading a guard with her giant sword Glad that plan came together. Oh, I, I could not see the movie in this moment, but that does sound correct based on what happens next. <laughs> right. That yeah, yeah, that like I figured that out in retrospect. It was and context went back clues, and, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Now to be fair, the darker the better when you're trying to show an old lady cutting off the head of a full grown man as part of a scary thing that happens in your scary movie. Fair. You know? Yeah. 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 So Laura sees this old lady behead a guard and she's like, well, let me follow her and see what she's up to. Right. So I guess the the old lady use, takes the dude's head, walks it to where the Shroud of Turin is and then uses his eyeball to turn off the security, the retinal scanners. <laughs> Classic the eyeball okay. scanners. Why would the security guard's eyes be Eyeballs able to turn be the off key to the Shroud of Turin? Is great at question. the site of the lasers? Seems like the wrong... That feels like a weird system. Yeah, also why would the retinal scanner work in an eyeball that no longer had blood running into There's a lot of questions yeah. here. He's got to like <laughs> empty the garbage can on the inside of the lasers every night. And he's just like, <laughs> yeah. I need, uh, come on, just make it a little easier. I need access. You guys got to give me access. But yes, retinal scanners need to start recognizing beheadings. That will yeah, prevent obviously. a lot of bad guy stuff. Retinal plus neck scanners, everybody. They're the plus, next. Look for neck shoulders. Yeah, minimum. exactly. <laughs> look for nipples. <laughs> There's the next level. There's no nipples too. Yeah, there you go. Also, in the nature of lazy third beat, Right, because she's cut off this guy's head, she deactivates the eye lasers, right? And then do pew, 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 pew. But then to get the shroud out, she just has to smash the glass. Yes. Like fucking Antifa fucking up a Starbucks, right? Yes. It's just like, <laughs> oh, damn, it's that shatterproof. I got to kind of bend it. It's kind of right, plastic. It's going uh, to go, but it's going to snap when it does. <laughs> and then, so, but Father Mansplain hears that. So he comes running in and he's like, hey, don't do that. And she's like, oh, I didn't think about it like that, you fucking idiot. And then she kills him. Stabs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Luckily, luckily, as she kills him, she gives him a very nice pause to do the full Lord Angel Michael, if you could take my body and if you need it for the rest of the movie, I'm totally cool with you taking my body over, but I don't really have any power, so I hope you enjoy this body. Goodbye. Stab. And twist stab. Yeah. Yeah, no, she stabs him in a way that's going to allow him to have a dramatic final line. And of course, Laura is hiding in the confessional the whole time watching this happen. And we have the whole like, does Satan lady hear her or doesn't she? She does, by the way. They, she does. Yeah, they find kidding. her and then they kidnap her. And then as after they walk out, yeah, Father Mansplain, he turns to the sky and he's like, Archangel Michael, possess my body and kick some satanic ass with it. And Michael's like, why would I want your body? I'm a giant angel. Yeah. How would that help? Michael takes it like a gift he didn't want. He's like, oh, thank you. Cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Right. I'll just. Uh, it's the ashes of your dog. Cool. Go ahead and grab your sweet. <laughs> 
priest body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wanted him to take the body and then instantly die. Fuck, why did you give me one with a sword in it? That's right. what I had. Okay. <laughs> hey, next time offer a body that's not physically dying, maybe? That would be great. That would be fucking great. Did you have a heart murmur? You gave me a body with a heart murmur? <laughs> <laughs> So we, we, we cut outside. The bad guys are shoving Laura into the decided to kidnap her because maybe Satan is into blondes. You know, they don't know. So they're kidnapping her. They're shoving her into the getaway car. But when they turn on the headlights, possessed father mansplain now with the Archangel Michael inside of him is standing in front of the truck. Right. And I got to say, I could not have predicted this scene for $10,000, right? Because we all know how this scene is supposed to go, right? They drive away quick, but he's got angel powers now. So he's like, and he catches the car and he tears open the back of it. And he's like, she's got backup now. If you thought that was what's going to happen, that's not what happens. No. He gets out of breath about three feet behind them. Again, an Eli sketch happens in the movie. And vomits <laughs> and like an vomits. Eli sketch. Yes. <laughs> I wrote this movie? Maybe? <laughs> <laughs> so just to be clear about the magical powers of archangels, in particular, mm -hmm. Michael, mm -hmm. the archangel, it's going to build in a very confusing way throughout the movie. The first thing we learn here is that he's... Kind of fast at running, but not. Yeah, faster than not us. That fast. Yeah. Now you're saying bolt fast. Yeah, yeah, not catch a car. No, fast. not catch a van fast. And he has like a power meter that runs out very quickly, like a video game, and then he vomits. Yeah. <laughs> and they get away. Yeah. And he's just like, ah. God's going to be like, do more cardio. Fucking, you got to start. <laughs> How many? You got to have eight pints of water every day. Blah, 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 blah. I used to have wings. Why didn't I? Why didn't I stay and with the skip wings? leg day? That's you. <laughs> and now we're going to cut over to one of my favorite bad guy establishing scenes of all goddamn time. So it starts with this kid just absolutely shredding a violin. Right, kids killing it on the violin. It's fucking hard. He was amazing, and I was like, "There's no kid." Oh no, we're in Italy, so everybody, every kid is just like eating olives on a porch swing and playing the violin all day, whatever. Yeah. And he's amazing. Probably language has four words. They're great. Yeah. So th this is where we meet Doctor Laurent. He's introducing himself to like this satanic elite cabal meeting, and the violin kid is his hype man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. He's the, he's the the show floor model. Yeah, exactly right. So he's explaining to everybody that with his new technology, they're cloning all the great geniuses of the past, and all of the satanic elite that are there are bidding on buying like the baby clone of Galileo or Machiavelli or Michelangelo, which is fucking amazing. <laughs> Hey, should we do Machiavelli? Is that the best idea? <laughs> that seems like not great, right? Did we just pick Italian people because we're in Italy? Yeah, a right. guy who wrote a farcical book describing what he considered to be politics of the time. I feel like, hey, did someone who has a Scarface poster in their home maybe choose Machiavelli? Because I feel like that's what happened Hey, there. did Machiavelli and politics go great here in the history of Italy? <laughs> Are we crushing it, would you say, with that? And Michelangelo, like, oh, well, yeah, well, we need more great painters in the world now. No offense to painters, but come on, give me a fucking <laughs> yeah, break. Hon, <laughs> hon, I know you got your heart set on Michelangelo, but I'm looking at the price of marble here, and I, whoa, <laughs> yeah, I do not know how many angels we can afford to I get it. have him see. <laughs> and right, yeah, now that I think about it, the kid, it's, He's going to, like, make obnoxious modern art now, even if we do give him the marble, right? Right, honestly. Right, exactly. Yeah, he's going to make a color pink that Anish Kapoor can't use. Because he'd be, he'd live in this time, and he'd be annoying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> make the bean. And, of course, we learned at the end of the sales pitch that the kid, the violin kid, was a clone of Vivaldi this whole time. Huh? Okay, but, like, how would that even work? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, son, this is your new home. And this is your violin. Oh, wow. You guys are going to get me lessons? Oh, you don't need lessons, son, because you are Mozart. Sorry, what? Genetically, you're Mozart. Right, but Mozart wasn't born playing the violin. He... Uh, actually, son, he pretty much was. He wrote his first piece of music when he was three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that... 
Sounds like a pretty obvious lie, but even if it wasn't, weren't his family members, like, musicians? Oh, were they? Yeah, look, I just Googled it. Mozart grew up in a family of traveling musicians. Like, he literally did nothing but music his whole life. Ah, I see. Okay. Uh, well, here's the thing. Your dad and I work on uh, Wall Street, so... I played clarinet in the sixth grade for a little while. Oh. Okay, so, like, hire someone to teach me, I guess? Sure. Yeah, I'll check the, I guess, the parent groups on Facebook. Yeah, uh, good Good to check. You sure you don't want to, like, just give it a go? See if, see if the old genes are going to do it for you? I mean, okay. Yep, nope, not a genetic thing. I'll make some calls. <laughs> I, I, you can stop, stop now. It. I just... Okay. Shut it down. So, yeah, so we get the Satan lady arrives with at Dr. Laura's place with the Shroud of Turin and kidnapped Laura, right? We cut briefly back to the cathedral where the Shroud was long enough for the priests. We have, like, a funny little scene where the priests watch... Father Man's plane get stabbed and then he walks in and he's just like, hey, I'm taking your jacket. And they're like, wait, what happened? Man? It's such a weird Terminator, like, give me your clothes moment for this otherwise very humorless film. Right. So, OK, well, no, actually, the high point of the movie's humor is in the next scene. Right. So Father Man's plane is going to go. He's got to go to a find a hermit priest somewhere to get information from him. So he dri he's driving along. And in excess, devil inside is playing on the radio. Yes. <laughs> and he's like, oh, it's devil music. I can't listen to that. And he switches over and it's send me an angel that's playing <laughs> instead. Yeah. Really wanted this to keep going, right? He opens up his portable laptop player. Angels in the outfield is playing. Curse <laughs> you, convenient music cues. <laughs> it's, no, but so here's the thing. That's a good joke. I laughed out loud. I was like, okay, that's a good bit. But send me an angel. Like in excess was thematically correct for as he's walking out action style to go see the about the fucking good dude. Send me an angel is not. And then they're just stuck with that as over this like montage of doing science yeah. shit to the shroud. And the archangel Michael has to like, yes, and that music and be like, okay, I actually do like this song. And he starts singing yeah, yes. for a second. <laughs> the only other thing that happens here, which I very much enjoyed, is they show us a quick thing of the bad guys doing their science with the shroud. And yeah. they're like, they're supposed to be taking DNA of Jesus Christ of Nazareth out of this mm -hmm. stupid fake sheep. But they're, what would they use for that? Th it's like a turkey baster. They're pulling, it's like so they're getting funny. Come off of the sheet with a turkey baster. It's so silly. <laughs> there was a furious fight in the props department where someone was like, it's a pipe at, Dave. It's a fucking pipe at. <laughs> All right. Well, sorry to say that song switch was the high point of the film. So we're going to take a break here where we're all feeling good. But we'll be back soon with even more of The Devil Conspiracy. I don't know. Are you sure they didn't have an orchid? Oh, my God. For the last time, yes. If you wanted a nice flower, don't have me go to the grocery store next time. Hey, guys. What you up to? Yeah. So Eli and I are using the fly machine to make ourselves into plants. Half Plants, Heath, we're going to be half plants, Noah. Okay. Uh, can I ask why? Because uh, we're sick of trying to choose what's for dinner every night. Yeah. Chinese, Thai, Indian, cooking at home. It's never ending. And expensive. Well, why don't you guys try HelloFresh? Oh, what's HelloFresh? With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. I don't know, Noah. I don't want to give up variety and choice just for the convenience of eating at home. Well, with HelloFresh, you won't have to. HelloFresh has more options than ever before. Dig into the biggest menu yet with over 45 dinner options to choose from weekly and even more market add-on items that suit any lifestyle. 45 options? That's a lot more than the same old takeout. It sure is. And you know how they say that breakfast is the most important meal of the day? Of course. Well, HelloFresh agrees. In fact, they're giving all subscribers free breakfast for life. That means you'll enjoy a totally free breakfast item with every single HelloFresh delivery. Now that's worth waking up early for. Okay, but have you actually tried it? 
Actually, I have. HelloFresh sent us a box when they became a sponsor, and I love how they have heart-healthy recipes to match my new diet, plus everything unpacks in seconds into the fridge. All right, Noah, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? Go to HelloFresh.com slash AwfulFree and use the code AwfulFree for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash AwfulFree with the code AwfulFree. Nice. Thanks, Noah. Okay, so when did when did we get a fly machine? Oh, remember when we wanted to make Lucinda a squirrel horse? Oh, right. And that did not go well. No, it did not. I still hear the tiny whinnies of terror in my dreams sometimes. Me too, Eli. Me too. And on that day, I shall sneak in at the final viewing and claim the shroud for myself. Uh, sorry, boss? Yes, um, Jerry, right? Yeah, ha, good with names, nice. Well, I, you know, I try. Yeah, so are you going to go in there with like a gun? Um... By yourself, because we have guns. You don't have to go by yourself. No, no. I actually, you're gonna love this. I'm gonna steal a sword and then kill the guard with that, and then I'll use his head that I cut off to deactivate the lasers, and then take the shroud back in a flash, like uh, you know, bing, bang, boom. Great, cool. Uh, got it. Sorry, question. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, I thought you might know my name too. I so sorry. Uh, you're new, right? I mean, it's not that new. I've been here for like four months. Okay, I'm sorry. Did you have a question or was this just a pop quiz about your name? No, sorry. Um, So just what if someone inside the exhibit has a gun? Like, do you have magic Satan powers or something? Uh, wait, that's not clear. I do have like a big echoey yell thing that I can do. Uh, but I, yeah, I look like a librarian. Who's going to see me coming? Yeah, I guess. I guess so. Right. So if there are no further questions, we'll just hope that the most important part of our multi-year plan goes exactly as planned without any hitches. Good? Yeah. Okay. It works okay. for me. All right. Should I not have said the name thing? I've been here for like four months. I've been here for like three years. So, Well, I didn't realize there was a standard. We're a Satanist cult. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action early the next morning with Michael heading in the woods to save the day. And it, they do this for so long with this character. They keep filming every time he's walking. It's like he's about to bust into the bad guy's fortress, but like he's going to see a hermit priest. Yeah, he seems lost in the film. Yeah, <laughs> but he's walking with purpose. God damn it. Hey, hey, Michael, same. Yeah, right. <laughs> So he gets to the hermit priest. The hermit priest racks a shotgun at him and he says, like, oh, I guess I guess this hermit priest was supposed to be like a whistleblower for the child rape thing. Yeah. Or would be whistleblower. Or he was like in the previous wackety schmackety scene, they were like, he was so crazy. He said the devil was coming back. So they they sent him to a hermitage for one talking about how the devil is real too much and two, calling them out for the child rape. Yeah, seems like the, the former is just a convenient excuse. Yeah. Yeah, this was weird. He sees Michael and he's like, you here to confess for probably fucking kids? And I was like, <laughs> wow, movie. Didn't think you were going to mention that, but okay. Well, that's just the thing. We're at a point now where if you put a Catholic priest into your movie, you have to be like, but not one of the rapey ones, though. I not know what you're thinking. This ones, is though. one of the guys who was against the rapey. Just pan over to the side of the mountain. There's a big line of other priests. coming up. <laughs> so, but, but Hermit Priest looks deep into his eyes and he's like, wait, you're a fucking archangel possessing a dead guy, aren't you? I know that look. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> it's weird that you recognize that right away. He still looks at the other side of the mountain. There's a line of archangels yeah, possessing right. a dead guy. Okay, <laughs> yeah, so right. it's, we get a weird, weird cross traffic here. Yeah. Really got the fast pass here. So yeah, but he's like, they stole the Shroud of Turin. You have to help me. And he's like, all in. 100% all in. So they head inside his thing. I guess Archangel Michael has, has brought along the surveillance footage to show to the hermit too. Yeah. And the hermit shows him he's got a, a like a fucking telescope aimed at the the hell castle? Yes, the bad guy <laughs> fortress. He's like, yeah, don't worry. I'm keeping an eye on it. You'll notice I can see that there's a 
a building there. There's no windows on this side, unfortunately. So you think this is all related to my neighbors in the demon castle that you can <laughs> see? Yes, yeah, so right over here. Yeah. Michael looks at the telescope. Yeah, there's a demon looking right back at me with a telescope. This is <laughs> I okay. say, now that you mention it. Yeah, but Michael's like, don't worry, Satan can't escape. God would never allow it. And the hermit guy's like, dude, have you read the fucking Bible? The Bible? Like, yeah, yeah obviously he does escape, though. Oh, there's, there's a prophecy in the Bible about that? Because that, that kind of makes my whole job kind of dumb so far. Like, my whole <laughs> stupid <laughs> existence. And he says, again... This is the hermit guy. He goes, well, God sent you, right? And Michael's like, nah, I want to talk about it. Right. <laughs> Did God like make Michael give up his badge and his gun and, his, and an off screen scene that we didn't get or something? <laughs> yeah. And I will point out, never resolved. We never find out what happened. We never understand if God was on fucking vacation on his 20, like I no, said earlier. No, all we know is that fucking Michael has gone rogue on this one. Yeah. Michael yeah. did an end run around the <laughs> omnipotent creator yes, of the, the universe yes, is the movie. Exactly. Yeah. So dumb. And when he tells the priest that, he's like, oh, okay. And there's truly, again, like an Eli sketch, there's about a second and a half of pause. And he's like, well, I'm going to go punch those people. Yeah, no, go, go uh -huh. ahead. Go, good luck with that. Yeah, the you know, obviously, obviously, punching. obviously. Try and do it on this side of the building. I'll watch. <laughs> So <laughs> the hermit also establishes, he's like, oh, so now, yeah, the old lady, the old saint lady that you saw earlier, I'm sure she's behind it. Also, there's a monster. And he's like, really? A monster? He's like, yep, there's a monster. It's totally biblical, totally counts. You'll probably run into him while you're beating up Satan. And he's like, oh, all right. Well, I guess the audience is prepared now for a Fuck. monster. Is that in the book, too? I don't know why I didn't read the book on the stuff. <laughs> That should be in my like packet for orientation. Is there a special way to kill the monster? Is there a thing? No, you just yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> so, get in there and wrestle him. I need a higher security clearance level <laughs> in heaven. So yeah, so then we get a quick, so like the, the hermit's going to take Michael to a secret cave that'll get him into the castle. So they're driving along, listening to exposition radio. We cut back to the shroud lab real quick. They're making so much progress that there's a hell quake. And Satan is able to pull himself free from the sword. Huh? What? I don't... Wait. So the power of Michael's sword was keeping Satan attached to hell so long as Jesus Christ's DNA wasn't removed from a piece of cloth? What? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Keep up. Yeah. And evil souls were showing up in hell this whole time. And there was no, de the devil was just like stuck there being like, I'm going to do some stuff eventually. Yeah, yo, yeah, you guys are going to get so tortured. Oh, man. Oh, I, I, I don't know if you guys have seen, but there's a little boy just born called Francis Crick, and he is a pretty big <laughs> brick in my <laughs> tower of evil. <laughs> so Could someone bring me like an abacus or something to play? Do you guys the Steam Deck yet? No, no Steam Decks yet. Well, when you get one, yeah. please bring me one. You want I'm an abacus to play with? Yeah, you know, <laughs> keep me amused. To do math? What? I was trying to think of an old timey thing. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, but we also learned the bad guys have learned that Laura is very promising as a potential like surrogate mom for the Satan baby. So we cut to the prison. Apparently they've kidnapped several women, you know, so they have like backup surrogates if they need them. Spares. Yeah. yeah they mentioned that she's the right blood type which already I was like, you don't know what you're talking about. And then they mentioned like, well, her uh, menstrual cycle timing, that's good for us. And, you know, no scoliosis, check for that. Um, <laughs> did, uh, did a Myers-Briggs ISTJ, actually. Huh? So that's <laughs> helpful, right? So, that's real. His moon rises on Scorpio <laughs> and her sun <laughs> rises on Leo. So that's a good match. Yeah, so, so they go in to get her and another chick. And then they, they bring them in, strap them to gurneys and rape babies into them, which is um, uncomfortable. Very upsetting. And not fun. Not a chill time. For all the things that this movie yada, 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 they were like, hey, 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 everyone slow down. We need to show all of this sexual assault insemination, okay? Yep. It's important to the movie. Absolutely terrifying. But honestly, at this moment, I was like, okay, if the movie ends 
with Laura having an abortion of Demon Jesus. This is my right? favorite movie. Holy of all time. abortion. Oh. I wrote in my notes, oh man, if the rest of this movie is just her trying to get an abortion, but Catholic fascists have stopped her and therefore yeah. empowered Satan, <laughs> it's the fucking best. You gotta consider the life of the demon. It's all right. You're yeah. you know, not doing it. I had a lot of notes along the lines of, is this all just like an analogy for healthcare in the red states? Or yeah. <laughs> okay, serious question. Does the movie think that you should be pro-life for a de- a literal demon baby? Is that unclear? Part of their message? I don't know. Deeply unclear. Well, they ultimately the like the right thing to do is gonna be to have the baby. So yeah, probably. Yeah, it's fair. So and then like Liz comes in while they're doing all this stuff while they're while uh, Laura's strapped down and she's like you know when I first saw you I knew you were the female lead and she's like well I mean thank you this is an awkward time to tell me that but thank you <laughs> hey hey look at me look at me you can do this you can give birth to Satan okay I believe in you weird pep talk ma'am just a <laughs> weird the, the, not the time moment for a pep talk not doing a fist bump <laughs> so <laughs> so meanwhile. Michael and the Hermit are walking badassedly through the woods to action music. There's this great moment. Uh, the Hermit still got a shotgun. He shoots this satanic crow that's apparently been following him. <laughs> yep, that was a Satan crow. <laughs> Satan crow. I got it, though. Don't worry. <laughs> and Michael's like, are you sure it wasn't just a crow? And he's like, he's been following us for a while. And he's like, yeah, crows do that sometimes, too, man. Just crows. Oh, shit. <laughs> really wanted a, a a flash cut to an angel back up in heaven. Well, I tried to go down and help him out as a crow, but this fucking <laughs> anti-pedophile guy shot me. So yeah, so Hermit's like, I don't go any further than this. And Michael's like, why not? He's like, because the movie only had me. I'm a known actor. I'm, I'm a, that guy from that thing. So they can't afford me for much longer. He goes, oh. You guys actually just came to visit me in my castle retreat. And I said, you could shoot in my kitchen if you didn't capture my kitchen staff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But he's like, take the shotgun with you and a torch. And he's like, really not a flashlight. He's like a flaming fucking torch. It looks more badass. Way more cool. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So he goes through the tunnel, the cave that's going to lead him into the Satan palace. Okay. To be clear, the Satan palace people built an infiltration tunnel just for this. Yeah. You know, in case someone needs to surprise them. Yeah. Right. Right. A torch tunnel. Yeah. So we cut over to like, I guess, Satan church. They've got... Laura and Brenda, they're bringing them out to the fucking arena where Hopper fought the Demogorgon. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Correct. Wearing like wedding veils. Hey, hey, no illusions. Great pull. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Great pull. Exactly (laughs) correct. Wearing wedding veils. Yes. Satanism's not a religion. It's a relationship, I guess. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So to be clear, the process, the two... Part process for having Satan's baby is first, someone plants a clone of Jesus in you, but then you just got the savior of the world in your uterus. Am I right? Like, we don't want that. So then you have to go through like a a whole other satanic entering the fetus ceremony. And that's what we're about to start. Okay. Okay. I just want to be clear. So they establish like in the most hand wavy way possible that most fetuses aren't strong enough to hold Satan. That's why they had to get a Jesus clone because that body would be ho- strong enough to hold an eternal, right? Mm. Camille John Gianni comes bursting out of this kid's chest. Huh? Eternals? <laughs> no one saw that movie. <laughs> no. I was hungry for so long. So they chained the, uh, Laura and this other potential surrogate to a post. Then the beast comes out. Now, they don't want to show us how bad their makeup is for the beast. So we just keep seeing sort of like his arm and, you know, we can see his shadow. It kind of looks like the predator, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when someone's like, you know, when you see like those world's strongest man things and they all just look like, you know, your dad's big friend and they do super impressive stuff and they're really strong, but you're not like, wow, that guy's muscle has a lot of definition to it. That's how the beast looks, right? The beast just kind of looks like a guy who might help your dad move some heavy shit out of your garage. <laughs> right, right. Eternal. And you go, wow, you lifted that whole thing. Dad bod. Yeah. Interesting pick. Maybe has some problematic ideas that he says during the move and your dad does that head shake thing while he talks. Like you're just not, <laughs> We're just not talking about it. I've known him since college. We're not doing it. His band is one person. He takes ivermectin. <laughs> <laughs> Michael is still speed walking through the caves, you know, doing a small walk. He drops a flare at one point and we're like, dude, you have a torch. He's like, yeah, it looks more badass this way. though." I just I thought it might be a nice flare, moment. Speed. Safe point. He literally is safe scumming the movie. At <laughs> <this point. laughs> 
And okay, I don't want to jump too far ahead. So gentlemen, feel free to slow me down. But I believe that this is the process for lowering the ladies down to hell. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Chain them up to a post in the fucking uh, garden where the uh, guy wife with, with a big gallery of people to yep. watch. Yes, yeah, the, right. the arena. Yep. Chain them up. Then the beast comes out from his cave mm -hmm. and just sort of unhooks them a bit. Seems unnecessary. <laughs> they then go down. That's to... That's the entire ceremony for the people in the gallery. To be clear. yes, the people in the gallery yeah. go home after. They're all that. like, yeah. oh. It it's done. So it's just, we're not going to get to see the. Yeah, it's it's got big second task of the Triwizard Tournament yes. energy going on <laughs> exactly, there. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then he puts them in a bird cage, mm -hmm. which he then dramatically lowers down to hell. In the hell hole they've got. It's so funny because we all wrote in our notes because he's lowering them down in this bird cage. And he's, I'm, I'm like, are they lowering them to hell? We all wrote that. And then, yes, he is. <laughs> at, at one point, he's like, oh, this is going to take forever. So he just like lets them go into free fall. Right. And then he stops. And I'm like, well, that's the same as just falling and hitting the ground. <laughs> that's, how you, that's how you give the bride of Satan whiplash. OK, the beast. Right? You got to be careful, bud. Duh. Yeah, so but they he lowers him way down, like halfway to hell or whatever. Uh, a bunch of demonic cage monkeys jump on him and grab him, and that's when the satanic lava tentacle of the devil floats up to them. <sighs> yeah, hentai smoke Satan snake. Yes, is what they went with. There was definitely a hentai pervert who was like. Was this what you guys were thinking? They were like, no, man. How long did you animate this for? 76 <laughs> hours. Uh, I'm going to have the um, snake go in mouths and ears and stuff. Okay. Yeah, we got it, man. Just put it in the movie and let's not talk anymore when there are breaks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, Eyeballs. So the dusty lava dick flies into one, the other surrogate, the other potential surrogate's mouth. She dies, right? Because she can't handle Satan's lava dick. And so it flies back out and it flies into Laura's mouth. Luckily, she can handle Satan's lava dick mm -hmm. and is Virgin Mary material. Because she's a Sagittarius. Yeah. I wanted her to just keep blowing away the smoke tentacle and Lucifer would just be like, oh, come on, come on. I, yeah, you come just on. burst my head again. You're wrecking the moment. <laughs> so, yeah. So they bring her back up to the Demogorgon arena. Liz, the old Satan lady, she declares her to be the chosen one. Everybody chants their approval <laughs> like Satanists are wont to do. But a bunch of people had already left just being like, what is this Dave Chappelle show? It's done. He just left. Okay. <laughs> so I didn't get to see this part. But yeah, they chant like, she's the chosen one or whatever. Yeah. So then they take Laura back to, I guess, her Magneto jail cell where she's going to be pregnant. <laughs> yep. All right. You're pregnant in here, which I'm, I think means that the rest of this movie takes place over nine months, maybe? I guess there's no bathroom there. There's no still, like place to sit. Yeah, it's a very, Would very... Would the savior um, have a longer gestation or a shorter gestation? I feel like he could like consciously be like, oh, I'm growing myself and... Right? Yeah, you know, be, yeah. be ready to go in a couple of weeks. Right. Yeah. But if it's too fast, then it's sort of goofy. Then you get sort of like a Jim Carrey's The Mask ate a big plate of meatball situation. Yeah, I don't understand right. why you want to slow yeah. roll it. Yeah. So... You, you want to get straight to the heartbeat just to be sure, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, of course. You want, to, you want to be protected in Ohio. Get inside those bills. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, okay. So then we cut back to Michael, who's apparently been walking down these tunnels long enough for this entire ceremony to go through for her to be impregnated and get the uh, Satan lava dick and everything. He's still walking through the tunnels. He stops at a mall map. Okay. So I, I walked past the Cinnabon already. Yeah. Hold on. I got to turn around to be the same face as the I'm not. I'm, I'm got to get in, in it. So my left. <laughs> okay. So yeah, the music seems apologetic that nothing has happened with this character yet. But finally, he gets to like the door. It's locked. And I'm like, a oh, fucking course. This is Satan's fortress. Why would they leave the door unlocked, you fucking idiot? <laughs> but he shotguns his way in. He walks in. There's two bad guys. He's like hiding from the two bad guys that are just standing there. I'm like, this could not more mimic an Assassin's Creed mission if he'd had to tag these bad guys with a bird first. I mean, give me a fucking break. Yeah, they might as well be walking back and forth like two Koopa Troopas. Like, <laughs> yes. same <laughs> and level of security. I know we have so much of this movie still left to cover, but I do have to talk about him losing the Mexican standoff. And I'm going to use a little bit of an obscure metaphor. So sometimes when Heath, Noah, and I are playing a board game, there will be a moment where we have to stop and Noah's like, no, Eli, if you do that, you lose because you'll do that and then Heath will do that. 
That's what happens to him in this Mexican standoff and he gets <laughs> shot. He's like, don't move or I'll shoot you. And the other guy's like, if you shoot him, I'll shoot you. And he's like, oh, then I give up my gun. And he's like, nope, still going to shoot you. Yes. And he's like, oh, right. God damn, sorry. <laughs> it's my first and then, standoff. And then the movie has to be like, Okay, well, no, it doesn't matter. He's an archangel. It doesn't so. matter. Electricity he powers. He has the back blue. He can turn blue, and now he is healed. So, yeah, so he heals. He beats the shit out of those guys. And then he, like, dresses as a guard, and he goes straight to the Shroud of Turin room. He can smell it, I guess. Yep. Maybe smell it. Okay, why is he trying to get the shroud at this point? That's nothing, right? It's We're done. Way late for that. The cum is out of the shroud. There's already a, a fetus on the way, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm, He's mm -hmm. in a different act of the movie at this point. Right. Also, I treat my blankets more delicately when I fold them than he does. He might yeah. as well crumple up the Shroud of Turin and stick it, it in his really back fucking pocket. scrounches it up. Fuck, yeah. is, this, is it a fitted sheet? It's the like Shroud when you're of trying to, how do you beat me to it? When you're trying to fold a fitted sheet and you just give up and settle on like yeah. ball around your arm that goes into the drawer. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So Dr. Laurent comes when he's stealing the Shroud. He's about to walk off, right? But then there's a computer that's open to the security camera looking at Laura in her Magneto cell. And he's like, wait, what's this? Just then Dr. Laurent walks in. Michael attacks him. He's like, tell me your evil plans. And he's like, well, you know, sat Satan stuff, man. Duh. And he's like, all right, well, fuck you. I'm going to blow this room up and then walk slowly away from it as it explodes in slow motion. Which was great. I enjoyed that moment. Yeah. He blows this room up. And I promise you, podcast listener, not only will most of the movie still take place in this castle, it will never be acknowledged that he caused a giant explosion no. in it. Underground. I just wanted the rest of the movie for the rest of the movie. Everyone's just like walking around construction sites and is like, sorry, we have to take the stairs. Blew Someone the blew up the elevator. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why we kept a whole bunch of explosive gas tanks right next to the shroud that we were using. It's actually like, really kind of a dumb you know, idea. So we go back to Laura's cell and she turns to the guard and she's like, hey, there's a fire alarms going off. Uh, should we do something about that? Should anybody maybe do something about that? And while that guy's like trying to figure out what to do, Michael comes in and beats him up too. Right. So now he's trying to get her away, right? He's trying to escape with Laura, but Lucifer starts doing shit talk from inside her womb. Yeah, he's doing some fucking, some satanic shit talk. It should have had to be baby talk style from Lucifer here, I thought. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, the best comment. Look who's talking style. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yes. So, so, you think to stop me, do you? Oh, is this how I talk right now? Oh, no. I'm going to grow my hard palate, and then I will get back to you. I'll tell you that. Your soul will burn with a thousand suns. <laughs> So Laura runs off. She realizes that, wait, that's not Father Mansplain. He died in the thing. I'm going to run away. So she runs off. He chases her. I wrote my notes. I feel like an alarm that bathes your hideout in red strobe lights isn't helping to like mitigate whatever emergency it's alerting you to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, definitely still a part of a problem. But finally, he, he catches up with her. and He's like, look, I'm an archangel and I went into your buddy and I'm here to help you. Very important. Have you been mouth raped by any lava tentacles in the last 24 hours? And she's like, I maybe and she's like, maybe one. Choose not to answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then the bad guys catch up with and they start shooting an old lady, uh, old Satan lady's like, you fucking idiot. We just impregnated her with Satan. She's carrying the goddamn Antichrist, you fucking idiot, and shoots him in the head. Yeah. As she's doing that, Michael and Laura are squeezing through a tight little crack to get to a different part of the movie. Right. Unfortunately, <laughs> though, the beast is over on that side of the tight little crack. <laughs> so this guy's job is take two ladies after snarling in like a two minute ceremony and mm -hmm. guard this one getaway tunnel area. Right. Generally yeah, you gotta keep the tunnels clear of trespassers. Yeah. OK, I like his technique, though. He's a side tackle demon. It, side it tackle based villain. Yes. yes. Yeah. This is also the first time we get a full look at him. And he's either a fire breathing bird or fire in a bird mask. <laughs> I don't know yeah. what we're going with. It's head? one of those things. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah. So he's fighting. Michael's fighting the beast. He jumps on his back like Wesley trying to take down Fezzik. Right? <laughs> so dumb. All the. <laughs> 
tries all of his blue angel lightning juice, but none of it's helping. And then Laura just gets captured. Yeah. Right? Because he's he's useless. The hero is useless. And uh, she says, all right, but if you hurt Michael, I will throw myself down a set of stairs. Fuck up your baby. And she's like, don't. Don't be like that. Don't do that. Don't. don't. Come on. This is <laughs> I also like that <laughs> the, the side tackle demon is just hitting Michael over and over while that's happening. Cause he just like, he does a tackle and then he like runs <laughs> into the dark somewhere else. And then he comes back the other way. <laughs> so that's <laughs> happening the whole time. Yeah. If there were any danger of us taking this movie seriously, what you have to picture is in the foreground, Laura and evil Satan lady having a let me go or I'll kill the baby conversation. <laughs> while in the background, <laughs> this giant bird guy with the body of John Cena's great grandfather just doing fucking elbow drops on top yeah, of the screen. <laughs> it might as well be Cecil yelling as the Boston lady in the background yeah. as far as like seriousness goes. So then we cut to Laura being strapped down to her bed. And Michael wakes up. He's chained up now. But don't worry. He pulls at his chains with all his angel might and they break. <sighs> Nothing ever matters in the movie. They do a <laughs> no. thing and it's like, oh, nope. It does. Nope. nope. Undid. That's nothing. The thing we did is nothing. My turn to write a page. Yeah, it's right. fine. Yeah. Nothing <laughs> happens. Seems like Michael would just like leave that shitty body and take any other one. I don't any know. Any other like, body. Right. Get the beast, beast body. The beast, beast body. Seems, yeah, there sounds you great. Go. There you go. That would be so fucking useful. But no, he pulls his chain and apparently they've locked him in the room that has the hell tunnel in it. <laughs> There was an HR meeting at the end of this that was like, okay, from now on, move our Cheney spot to not the room with the <laughs> right. literal Hellgate. Yes, exactly. Okay. Right. So, yeah, so he gets free. The beast is like, oh, I'm going to kick your ass. He's like, no, I'm going to jump down the hell hole. Just jump all the way to hell. And then I'm going to go kick Satan's ass. And he jumps down the hell hole. And the beast is like, I feel like that works. Too. I I wanted you to do that. You're stupid. you lost a fight to me, man. You're gonna yeah. go fight my boss in hell, <laughs> right? He's much okay. better at side tackling than even me. <laughs> that was dumb of you. Stay out of his three foot circle. That's my advice. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Well, this movie will never seem more promising. So I guess this is the best time for another break. But first, let me give Act Three the hard sell. Will Michael manage to kick some ass and get some answers? Will he instead just get the shit beat out of him and get chained up again? Will that be essentially the only thing he manages to do for the entire fucking movie? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the dumb but fun conclusion of The Devil Conspiracy. So good. You're going to get such a pump. Hey, guys. Wait, what are you doing? Get ready to get ripped. I had no clue. Yeah, he said, said we're getting ready to get ripped with all our new workout gear. We got Hydro Packs. Goo stabilizers, bunch of stuff. And a can do attitude. Exactly, Eli. I mean, that stuff sounds great, but aren't you forgetting the best essential to take along with your workout? There is? Nope. Nope, definitely not whatever you just said. The essential your workout really needs is FitBot. It's a fitness app that creates completely personalized workouts that adapt as you improve. Whether you're a seasoned gym goer or just starting your fitness journey, FitBot will push you to make progress. It's like having your own personal trainer, but better. It's cheaper, you can work out anywhere with or without equipment, and it's easy to build a custom fitness plan that works for you. Most fitness professionals are on steroids. Have I used it, you ask? I sure have. I love how it can adapt my workout to wherever I am. So whether I'm at home with no equipment or at a fully stocked gym, I get exactly the workout I need. That's why I, No Illusions, personally endorse FitBod. All right, we're sold. Where do we sign up? Add FitBod to your workout essentials. Join FitBod today to get your personalized workout plan. Get 25% off your subscription or try the app for free at FitBod.me slash gam. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash gam. It, like, drastically shortens their lives. It does sound like an excellent product. That's right, Eli. That's not what I said. Yes, it is. <laughs> Father Macaroni, thank you for your assistance. Anything for you, Michael. You are the God's hound. Indeed. Indeed, I am. So, real quick, before I go. When we met, you mentioned the church's attack on the children of God. You said something like that. What did you mean exactly? Did I? Say that? 
Ah, I, I don't think uh, I don't remember. I said no, anything yeah, yeah. Remember, them. you were like, "You're a group of demons." You said that to me. Are, are there demons within the Vatican? <laughs> uh, ah. So here's the thing: the church, yeah, the, the Rock of Saint Peter. Mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm, the one. Yeah. Anyway, we've had a little bit of an issue with session. Sorry, Father, with with what? What'd you say? Child molestation. You're you're doing a weird thing with your mouth when you're child molestation. It's like a big. It's most of what we do for the last thousand years. Oh, yeah. So I was, I was, I was bringing that up. Of course, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, um, here's the thing. I'm more of a demon. Guy, no, of course, uh, uh, totally. It, it, no, like, not that the other thing isn't serious, it's just it, absolutely. Uh, no, I understand. I just, uh, you know, I've got like a big lightning sword. Uh, seems like y'all need for that some kind of like judicial oversight, right? Yeah, is there an angel of judicial oversight just off the top of my head? Huh, you know what? I will ask when I get up there, I'll see if I can send someone down. That would be great. great. That would be really great. great. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Cool. Uh, but hey, good luck with the demon thing though, right? That's Thanks. Good luck. So is it like still a big Very thing? much still a problem. Yes. Got it. Sure. Yeah, so I'm going to ask up there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back for still more of this shit. And we're going to rejoin the action by checking in on baby Satan in utero. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. The demon Jesus fetus that we're going to get to see a lot for the rest of the movie. Yeah, yeah. he's the star of the last third of the show. I kept saying Jesus fetus to myself over and over and over. Because I was like, that's <laughs> Jesus funny. Fetus, Jesus, Jesus fetus. Sounds like Jesus a candy. Fetus, yeah. Jesus fetus. Oh, yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Like sugar babies. Yeah. Um, so, but less problematic. But way less right. problematic. <laughs> but so, yeah. So, but Satan lady is watching over Laura and the, and the Jesus fetus. Michael, meanwhile, he crawls along the ground in hell because he's just jumped down the pit and he was just like, wow, I thought there would be like some cushions or something oh, like a ball pit. Shit. Oh, I'm just a guy. Fuck. Wolf. <laughs> Didn't think this through. I fell so far or not so far. It's unclear. It's really unclear. <laughs> so yeah, but then he's attacked by demons. He fights them off. Yeah. The demons are, they're good at the takedown, like the wrestling part, but they need yes. some BJJ in there. Right. To right? Like finish it off. Yeah. And he throws the demon away. He looks up. He sees that Satan has escaped. Like Satan's pulled himself free of the sword. And he's like, well, fuck. Then what the hell? I can't jump back up now. Why wouldn't my boss tell me about this? That's so fucking weird. (laughs) All right. And then a bunch of like devil birds fly up and land next to him and turn into demons. They have a little uh, a little reunion. Yeah, it's so it's Mammon is the name of like the lead devil bird, pterodactyl demon guy. Yeah. Uh-huh. And all of a sudden, it's so weird in this movie. We get the tone of like a high school reunion. All of a sudden, it was like, oh, hey, hey, Mammon. Hey, Mike. So, yeah, been a while, right? Hey, how's it going? You look good. <laughs> You're in a human body. That's weird. Weird. <laughs> That's yeah. weird. You still partying with the guys down at the tavern? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and then this, so the demon, the bad guys, like they all pull out their fire sabers and I'm like, okay, that's lazy as fuck. But now we've established that the bad demons have fire sabers and we saw him have a light sword earlier. At least we're setting up an awesome light sword fight, but no, we're not. No, we are excited. not. They, swords will literally only be used as tent poles in this yes, film. Yes, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. because they chain him up here. They're like, oh, we're going to chain you up with Lucifer's sword. And he's like, I'll fight you. And they're like, you're just a dude. You're just a dude who jumped down into hell. And he's like, fuck, I am. Well, I'm a dude who after a minute, you can beat up some more. Do you have a chain for me to break? I could probably break a chain. <laughs> Not this one, unfortunately. <laughs> Gave me a second. So, And they have this like stupid ass exposition moment where the demons have to say, ha ha, you accidentally brought a human body into the hell and now are unable to escape it because those are the rules. And he's like, according to who we made them up just now. <laughs> but that's the rules now. 
<laughs> and later they're just going to break the rules. It's fine. Yeah. And right. And then just that they just don't do that anymore. So then <laughs> we get my favorite scene of the fucking movie. We, we get Laura very much pregnant. Now we, we're, we're seeing the satanic ultrasound. <laughs> mm-hmm. I wanted so bad for it to be a girl and <laughs> the demon guys to be like, oh, is oh. that going to fuck up our prophecy? <laughs> <laughs> right. But it has pointy ears. The little ultrasound has little pointy ears in the background. It's fucking cute as hell because it's a demon baby. And then, like, as we're watching that, the fetus starts crawling out of the ultrasound Ringu style, right? And it's going like, mommy. And I cracked the fuck up. I wrote my notes. Lost my fucking mind. Yeah. Oh, you put it in the notes. Thank you. He sure did. It's I want ultrasound demon fetus to be a recurring character in the podcast of Oh, yeah. This is our new t shirt. This is everything. He's going to sell some Hello Fresh. Yeah. (laughs) It's so impossibly silly. That's Hello Fresh, mommy. (laughs) (laughs) I tried to take a screen cap of this and it wouldn't let me. You know how like Hulu blanks out their screen when you pop up one of those things? So I actually took my phone and took a picture (laughs) of my screen. <laughs> and then emailed it to myself to put it into the notes. Oh, very much worth it. It's goddamn amazing. Don't worry, we'll have Tim like check our Facebook page. We'll have Tim uh, send it. Watch up this so movie. No, no, don't just worry about the Facebook movie. page. Yeah, watch really, this fucking honest, movie. Honestly. You're not supporting. I mean, you're supporting crazy people, but you're definitely not supporting bigots. No one who made this movie, not a one, thinks that Christ is their Lord and Savior. I promise <laughs> you. Probably not. Yeah. No, it's just a bunch of like hentai weirdos. It's fine. Right. Absolutely. And I I say that lovingly. I mean, you're supporting this podcast. so. (laughs) But Dave, the ultrasound demon fetus or whatever, turns out to have been a nightmare. Laura wakes up sitting straight up. Yes. Old Satan lady is sitting at her bedside and old Satan lady's like, I have a story to tell you. And then Laura rolls her eyes, but I roll mine harder. (laughs) She's like, no, this is the monologue that made me take the part. (laughs) Isn't it though? Please pay attention. So yeah, so she tells the story of Satan from Satan's perspective, and then like, and and you're just like, wow, he's he's so obviously the good guy when you look at anybody else's perspective yeah. on the story. It's like, just really easy to be Team Satan. I'm hearing this, and I was like, I think I'm Team Satan right now. Yeah. I mean, like, except for the kidnapping and impregnating thing that the cult did, but that's the cult of Satan, right? No, that's Satan, not on Satan. Yeah. I think he's the good guy, though. Yeah. She says, Satan suffered for you. And I'm like, yeah, no, he spent a lot more time in hell than Jesus. Jesus was there for a couple of days, right? Yeah, like, he was a fucking in and out. Satan's mm-hmm. like the Antifa of this world and this story. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, there's just this weird moment at the end because she's like, whatever. She says something sassy to a lady and she grabs her face and she's like, you have to give birth to Satan as a baby and... Also, you have to be nice to me. And I was like, these are weird, (laughs) mismatched requirements. (laughs) You have to birth our Jesus demon science baby that will rule the universe. Also, didn't like your tone earlier. So, yeah, right. I was telling a good story and you kept asking about like, (laughs) am I getting a doula? And and I was like, come on. (laughs) A doula? So Jesus demon. Also, that's dangerous if you don't also have real doctors. That's just yeah. You a need a real idea. doctor. There's you get <laughs> even we Satanists understand that you need a real doctor. Okay. So, so we cut to we cut to Michael chained to his rocket hell because he gets chained constantly in this fucking movie. And we introduce probably the dumbest aspect of this movie, and it, and it serves no fucking purpose. The Dickensian street urchin <laughs> chimney sweeps. Okay. Of hell. So weird. Now look. I know as we get older and as my dementia gets worse and worse, more and more often you guys have to correct the insane fugue state hallucinations I have. <laughs> we don't correct the psychosexual part, but say thank we have to you. The yes, because information. that's how you yeah. get demon babies selling HelloFresh. Exactly. Yeah. But mm-hmm. are these the people <laughs> that were sacrificed to Satan to be his body, but it didn't work out? So now they just live here? I don't fucking no and like look for work outside of hell's home depot is that what we're supposed to think is happening they, to these they, people i think they're they're maybe hostages and like lucifer and the the hell people are trying to do like some sort of negotiation with the omnipotent god i don't know they're down there yeah and they're supposed to be innocent no they said they were offered to hell, right? Yeah, that they they make that super clear. They run up to Michael and they're like, "Yeah, so we're just the chimney sweeps of hell and everything." 
But we haven't, we didn't die and go to hell. We were like sacrificed or offered up to Satan in some way so that like if we get out of hell, then you don't have to be like, wait, were they all rapists or what? You know? You're like, that's what everybody says when they get to hell. Yeah, right, right. But then, but the, but he's like, hey, if you kids give me my sword, I can get out. And they're like, what sword? We have not seen a sword. I haven't seen a sword. You seen a sword? I didn't see a sword. And just that a bunch of demons attack and the kids have to run off. Yeah. Right. And then they try for another creepy fetus shot, which somehow they keep failing. Fetuses are so creepy looking, but they keep failing at that. Because it's they keep showing a full <laughs> ass fucking baby. It's also vaping for some reason. Like it keeps blowing. Yeah, I don't get smoke out of its nose <laughs> like it's on Vine in 2003. Cotton. <laughs> Thank you. So, and then we see Laura. Now, Laura's very pregnant with the Satan baby. So she's like all veiny, like an erect penis. Yeah. Now she's, yeah. she's turning slowly into a cone head because of yeah. the Satan baby. She's getting sick because of the Satan. <laughs> she's got morning star sickness. <laughs> <laughs> well done, sir. So, yeah, but we get a montage of like being pregnant with the Antichrist shots. And we also we establish here that Liz is super duper jealous, the old Satan lady, that she didn't get to be pregnant with Satan. We have a lot, uh, several shots to establish that. Yep. And then like Laura makes her move, right? Because like we get that she's like becoming like she's getting overtaken by the devil more and more. So we get this shot. The doctor comes in to check on her. The lights go out and we like she kills the doctor. Like, but well, the lights are out with her new Satan strength with her Satan strength. And then she goes out and like there's a guard in the hallway and she kills him with her Satan strength as well. And look, I get that this is supposed to be like, oh, she's being overcome by evil. But like, there's no way they didn't intend the head squishing to be funny. <laughs> yeah, where she starts <laughs> dancing on the guy's yeah. head. I almost pulled the clip just so podcast listeners could hear the I shit you not eight seconds of <laughs> it's so silly. <laughs> this movie wants you to be like, wow. She might as well climb a turnbuckle and do a drop yeah, on the exactly. guy. The beast so jumps in and drops an elbow as well. Yeah. Sorry, I heard we were doing wrestling moves. So, <laughs> she, but yeah, but she head stomps that guy for like 18 minutes or whatever. And then she steps back and she's like, all right, there's something wrong here. And she says out loud, I have to kill you to the fetus. And we hear Satan say, and I quote, Mother, no. Yeah. Come on. The fetus has the voice of like old guy from New York. It's so yes. funny. Yes. It was like I'm Chris Walken. It was like, Mother, thing, but no. It's so, so good. I laughed a lot. And now we're going to watch her. And I know we use this metaphor a lot, but there is no better metaphor in film or TV or cinematic history. Now we're going to watch her pen is blue. Try to abort her fetus. Yes. This was funny. Yeah. Too. We have all written pen is blue in our fucking notes. She's going to drink some bleach to kill the fetus. And like the one hand is trying to drink the bleach, but the other hand is trying to stop. <laughs> trying the to bleach. stop. Oh, yeah. It's a great <laughs> bit. There's a cut scene with her like left hand dueling her right hand with clothes hangers and like, yes, it's yes exactly. so fucking weird. <laughs> Very upsetting. But now, to her credit, though, she wins. She chugs the fuck out of that bleach. She drinks a whole gallon and a half or something. And then Liz kicks down the door and she's like, I got you. She's like, too late. Drink all the bleach. I got you is what just happened. Right. And then, no, she didn't for some reason. Yeah. Right. She, she projectile vomits some blood. Liz gives her a bad guy speech. She says, you have no idea what suffering really means. And I'm like, she just guzzled a gallon of bleach. I feel like she at least has an idea, <laughs> but no. What do the yeah. people who made this movie think drinking bleach does? Cure COVID. Yeah, seriously. Because it kills you in seconds, right? It kills you and everything inside you in seconds. So the idea that they're like, no, she drank some bleach. So Satan definitely has a tummy ache now. Yes. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's miracle mineral solution. Now the demon fetus is neurotypical and it's boring. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea how many matchsticks are on the floor right now. <laughs> so, so she, uh, so uh, everybody goes to leave. They're like, you know, go get the doctor. You know, we got to uh, de-bleach her or whatever. And Liz goes to leave. But just then Satan completely takes over Liz's body and uses like Satan kinesis to close the door. 
and he, like give her a stern talking to for not being a better old Satan lady on his behalf. Liz, can I speak to you alone? I don't want to do this in front of the staff. Um, <laughs> turns out her drinking bleach didn't really affect me at all, but I'm just disappointed in the lack of workplace decorum around here. <laughs> I've been reading a lot of Who Moved My Cheese and I realize that I have become sure. a crutch for yeah. a lot of the staff here. Yeah. So I want you to feel free to take the initiative in okay. the future. Okay. Yeah, so I don't have to. Well, I, now that you mention it, I don't know why we have all this bleach in here. We, we'll, we'll, we'll get rid of it. We'll yeah, get rid of the bleach. That's a good question. Why do we have it? That's a great question. That's the first thing I want you to act on. Why did we you have? Know, I'll have the cleaning crew bring their own, right? That'll there be easy. They always, they're always sure, sure with that. We really are Satanists. <laughs> Well, and also we should point out that like, you know, Satan takes over Laura's body and he she picks up Liz and like choke slams her to the ground. And I wrote in my notes like this is the problem with using an elderly woman as your antagonist, because it's still like at this point in the movie, I'm like, oh, OK, I just watched a 70 year old woman get slammed to the ground by her throat <laughs> is what I'm looking at now with my eyes. It's OK. I do Pilates. I do a yeah. lot of Pilates. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, Liz was looking good, right? Sure. Like this is a this is a strong looking older woman for sure. Sure. Yes. Absolutely. Heath. Eli, right? For sure. <laughs> You're a very normal person with very normal. <laughs> normal taste. and chill, Heath. Yep. Yes, and <laughs> so, we all jerked off to this part of the movie. Yeah, Heath. we you. all did. Thank you. That's canon. That's why they have that pause icon in the top right. They're like, this is the best time for jerking off. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but only if you have X-ray on on Prime. <laughs> I got to turn that feature on. You got to yeah. turn that setting on, everybody. Yeah. It's on the whole time in Paddington. And I don't know what that means. It's just always on. <laughs> right. Okay. So, yeah, like, so, but Satan tells Liz, hey, look, Laura's gotten to be a little bit of a pain in the ass and the baby likes her now. And it's just, it's going to be a whole thing. Make sure you kill her the minute I'm born. And she says, yeah, we'll kill you. And then we'll blow up the hellhole, all the demons will get out and then we'll blow up the hellhole. And he says, I don't see how that'll help our plan, but it'll be useful for the good guys <laughs> if there's explosives there later. So sure. Why would I not want to go back? <laughs> it's a physical hole, magical portal yep. that you you would just blow up. Yep. Apparently. Just a yes. hole. Just yep. a hole. We're just going to close it. All it, that far It's going to take a few rocks, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> we check back in. The, the, we see the hermit guy he's like oh you know i'm standing off to the side being a guy in the chair sure wish i'd give him a radio or something i guess he literally he looks through the telescope and he's like yep looks like a movie might be going on over there Can't yeah. there's no windows also, on this side. he he prays to saint michael and i was like hey man maybe just pick any other saint he's busy right, right, now. right yes. what i wrote yes it's got a thing going. I wanted Michael to, to like pop back in through, you know, FaceTime prayer app or whatever and be like, hey, a little busy. busy. Yeah, a uh, little busy wrestling demons like right now. Can I call you back, please? A little tied up in hell right now, literally. <laughs> a little tied up. It's like me texting Noah on a Wednesday night. Hey, I was wondering if we could. Oh, my God. Just not today. Of all the days. <laughs> so then we, we cut back over to Laura. She's in a space coffin. And her head is shaved, so she looks more like a penis, in case she didn't look enough like a penis yet. Okay. Being Satan making you bald is problematic in this movie, Thank I think. you sure. for speaking up for our people, Heath. <laughs> <laughs> Not all bald people there you go. are filled with Satan fetuses. Differently follicular. Thank you. Also, <laughs> the, the, uh, the lava tentacle, okay, apparently it can kind of come and go as it pleases. Right. We, we see it like it flies out of her at one point and then flies back in. At this point, it flies out and it goes down to hell to talk some shit to Michael. Yes. He, he takes a time out to just go roast Michael down there. He's being born. Lucifer is being born at this moment. Yes. He's like, ah, go ahead, quick. I, I just ha, I want to fuck with the guy. He's, he's tied up down there. Right. Cool. Yeah. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Going great for me up there. I am possessing a baby. Of Jesus. So it's, it's confusing because sometimes I'm also possessing Laura yeah. through the fetus. That is confusing. And sometimes I'm down here and it's a lava Somet well, tentacle. Now I'm down here. Now I'm possessing a you. demon, dead demon that was near you. No fetuses in this one, I checked. Why is God letting you do this? I don't understand anything in this plot that we're in. 
So, and then there's a, oh, this is great fucking moment where Satan's like, oh, I should thank you, Michael. And Michael's like, for what? And he's like, for sucking balls, for being that fucking <laughs> rude. <laughs> hey, so hey, awesome. whoever wrote that lazy piece of shit line, you rock, man. <laughs> I love your courage. It was such a weird moment. So yeah, this demon, Lucifer, is like, thank you, Michael, out of nowhere. And Michael's like, oh, you, I, I, so I'll bite. You want me to like set up your... Thank you for failing. Failure. Face. You. Got That's what you are. Yeah. And then the fire tentacle flies away and we get this amazing fucking twist that makes this entire fucking movie worthwhile. This was God's plan all along. And God knew that once Satan's lava tentacle had possessed the Jesus fetus, he would have to go back to hell and talk some shit. And that's when God would trap him in a spirit bubble. <laughs> and then we would just have the second coming of Christ, guys. Got him. <laughs> it's so dumb. Yeah. So he captures Satan in this little bubble. The chimney sweep kids come. And he's like, come on, one of you has my fucking sword up your ass. I know you do. And they do. Yeah, they do. He's right. The demon birds show back up and it's like, will the kid give him the sword or the demon birds? And and then he, they get, the kid gives a damn. And instead of the <laughs> awesome sword fight that they've been setting up, he's just like, ah, I'm badass now. And everybody else dies. I like that the kid, the orphan kid, wasn't sure what to do with the sword for a second. Mammon, a demon, is like, no, give me the sword. I will totally set you free after that. And the kid looks at his other orphans. He's like, do you think it's demon guy who's lying? Or just, oh my God, <laughs> give the angel the sword, Craig. Seriously. <laughs> they, they even have a little girl who does that, whose entire thing is like, it's so very obvious that the good guy is the fucking good guy. What are you goddamn okay, talking okay, about? Well, okay, okay I just thought right I now, just... say, I'm not the werewolf out loud. I just want to <laughs> real quick get a read. I was gonna say, it's Heath taking a turn in D&D minus. &D okay, so I could hit the dragon or <laughs> turn into a falcon. But yeah, so but then he turns into a large black man with golden wings and defeats all of the bad guys, like just by waving his arm. Like nothing interesting happens. Nothing. Yeah, fun no. To look it's, at. They did not have the budget for fight choreography. No. Nor did they have the budget to keep using the angel body for more than no, like, no. three more. Mm -hmm. That guy's personal trainer was like, I, I, I will go with you to the castle. You can film me three times on a green screen. That is all I am doing for this film. Apparently, yeah, because that like then he wakes up on Earth, but he's still in the priest body. Keep in mind, the priest body was in hell. He, he went bodily to hell to do. I don't know what the fuck is supposed to have happened here. He left the priest body while he was in hell. Then he went up to Earth and then he was like, you know what? I'm going to zoop that dead priest body back up here and possess it again because the budget of the movie doesn't have enough for me to have wings for the rest. Yeah, well, you know what? He feels that he feels about that body the way you feel about your 93 Subaru. He, you sure, know, he yeah, should probably get a new body, but <laughs> no, why? Kind of attached Emotional to that one. attachment. So, yeah, it's been on fire a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so so Michael goes back. Uh, to where, like, I guess he stashed the shroud before he got chained up in hell and they haven't found it. So he goes back, he gets the shroud in case you were worried about the shroud. It does not matter. No, nope. the movie doesn't even do anything with it. It's so stupid. And then he assassins creeds his way through the, the hideout until he gets to Laura. And he's like, OK, so you have to trust me this time. I know last time you went with me, you got kind of captured immediately and things just got like obviously significantly worse for you. He's like, but this time it's not going to happen, right? Uh, we're going to win this time. Okay, at this moment, I thought like, okay, he's grabbing the shroud. They must be planning to do something with that. Is he going to like make his own copy of Jesus to like fight the Satan Jesus? Ooh, That yeah. could have been cool. And then he's like, do I, do, do I masturbate to put it into the little machine? <laughs> <laughs> feel bad about that. Sure. And then, and Michael starts explaining to Laura because he's like kidnapping her in the space coffin or whatever. And he starts explaining to her, he's like, don't worry, your kid isn't the evil kid. Your kid is actually going to defeat the devil. And I'm like, no, we're an hour and 31 minutes into this fucking movie. You can't switch plots on me you now. You can't backseas, but they are. They're backseeing. <laughs> yep. So now she gets taken over by Satan and they're in a fight. A fight that begins... When she straddles him and then dumps <laughs> vaginal acid on him. She water, water breaks break to the face. On yes. him as an, Marvel needs to get a pregnancy-based 
superhero because yeah. this yeah. is fun. <laughs> So like an umbilical cord of truth. Like there's a lot oh, of cool things. Yeah, there's a lot of, of stuff there. They didn't think of any other pregnancy based shit to do. Unfortunately, they had acid water break and that was it. Belly bumping. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Right. That would be a good Ultron one. in the face. Yeah. Yeah. But so she starts kicking his ass and he's useless. He's completely fucking useless. So he does nothing. He just gets his ass whipped. She does bits. Yeah, she does a b- bunch of great bits. At one point, she like gives him the old Batman backbreaker, and then she's like, "Look, it's like the Pieta. You remember the Pieta? The statue? <laughs> We're doing the Pieta." Sticks her fingers through his throat. His throat like gives pretty easily. He doesn't have much throat there. Yeah, that priest had a really, really stabbable throat, I will say. He picked the wrong guy. Yeah, but the priest explains as she's whipping his ass that the baby is actually going to whip Satan's ass. And he says, and I quote, he's more powerful than you because good is more powerful (laughs) than evil. Okay, this is the best. Because, yeah, it's half Jesus, theoretically, and half (laughs) Lucifer's. So... The theory is, the reasoning in the movie is Ty goes to the runner, to Jesus. Ty goes to the yes, runner, yeah, yeah obviously. Right, right, yeah, yeah, of yeah, course. Exactly. <laughs> also, I, I just have to point this out, that the way that she responds to evil is less powerful than good, or good is more powerful than uh-huh. evil, is she hits him with a giant serving tray in the face, <laughs> yes. and it makes a loud pang, and we are still expected to take the movie seriously. Well, and then <laughs> she runs out as, like, completely possessed by Satan, and, and she runs to Liz, and she says, Liz, they've tricked me into giving birth to the antichrist you got to abort this baby quickly and then liz is like no we're not gonna abort the baby because you're probably laura just playing a trick on me so being pro-life saves the day oh in this movie, there we right? go refusing the abortion so so then she goes into labor skip ahead skip ahead skip ahead right we had to see all the details <laughs> of her sexual assault when it comes to labor it's just like and the baby there's a baby breathe see? breathe push he's here yeah, yeah exactly it. yeah oh, I wanted a sword mouth fetus to pop baby with a sword to pop out oh, oh yeah and the, but then the sword's like really big baby just flops over and it's like right. <laughs> he's gonna drag <laughs> it behind him yeah. oh he's gotta do the like dragon dragon he's turning it end over end towards everybody <laughs> yes. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. <laughs> Come on, my baby. Come on, my honey. I swear he's the Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So, <laughs> so yeah, so, but, so that they take the baby and she's, I guess, gave birth on top of the gate to the hell portal. So they open the hell portal. She falls down into the hole. Don't worry. She'll be holding on to the no, wall. No, don't worry. She didn't. Later. Yeah, she's fine. So then all the hooded people, they gather back out at the Demogorgon Arena and Liz comes out with the baby in a white swaddle. I feel like you put Satan baby in a black swaddle, but they're like, she's like, here is the chosen baby. Everyone bow to it. Everybody bows to it. And she says, and we shall baptize this baby, not with water, but with blood. And everybody's like, Ooh, blood. What? I wonder what she means by that. (laughs) And then the beast (laughs) comes out with this little triangle knife weapon on a chain and start slowly mowing his way through all of the people weed whacker style. And chopping a few people at a time. In this so crowd. slowly. And everyone starts to run away. So he can't even do them all in a group. He's having to nope. chase them up and down stairs. People just being like, I was just here for the biotech IPO I party. I thought I was going to get that the a kid. <laughs> oh. no, Backing out into the bushes. I was looking for a cheese cult. <laughs> Oh, this takes a hilariously long time. And then everybody's just like, I guess that we would. And the, like even the extras are like, well, why wouldn't we just go through these windows? I feel like we would just go through these windows. No, <laughs> but they don't. I'd love to hear Satan ladies chatter during this section. Right. And I baptize you, baby Satan, not in water, but in blood. And we're off. For sure, for sure. Uh, can I say something, though? Yes, Greg, what's up? Okay, I, I feel stupid saying this now, but I kind of thought he was going to do everyone at once, you know, with one big swing. Oh, my God, me too. Yeah. It kind of kills the moment. Yes, actually, right? kills the moment. I'm so glad you said that. Because it's like Satan is reborn, not Satan is reborn. Now go catch Carol from accounting. That's exactly. Yes. 
<laughs> oh, wow, look at Steven go. Yeah, I think he does cool <laughs> Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he always invited us to the meets. Yes. Yes. I forgot about those. Hey, while I have it, um, when does Satan become like, you know, Satan? I, I, don't, I don't get your question. Okay, well, right now, he's just like a normal baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, looks that way. So when does he start like taking over the world and stuff? Oh, no idea. Like I honestly, I thought he would kind of come out fully Satan. Huh. I didn't even buy diapers or you know like formula. I guess, yeah. There's lots of hope. These terrible twos are especially terrible. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, it looks like he's wrapping up. I guess we should get going. We're gonna go buy a crib and babies are us closes at six. At six? I know. It's like who's the real devil here? Am I right? Totally. Ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, we should point out, too, that, like, through this whole fucking thing while he's killing all the people, Dr. Laurent is standing ever closer to Liz with a, like, but it's you and me, though. You still need but me, But I'm though, on your right? side, kind right? Of a, kind of a look <laughs> on his face. But no, we'll come back to that. First, we have to have Michael waking up, having uselessly useless some more. I literally, okay, be, again, I know, dementia, all that. I literally don't know how he fell unconscious this time. Was it the pizza tray? Yeah. Yeah, it was the pie to the face okay, and he got yeah. knocked out. Yeah. As an angel. <laughs> it's a very serious movie where he got the pie God. to the face. Bang. So, and apparently they just left the shotgun sitting there with him, like knowing that there's an angel that can possess dead people. Seems like a dumb idea. So he grabs his shotgun. He wanders off. We go back. The beast is done triangle macing everybody to death. Dr. Laurent, they let him live long enough to kiss the baby on the head and then they kill him, which is sweet. It's very nice. Yeah. Very oh, nice moment. It smells like sulfur. <laughs> I really wanted him to be like, so like, if I, could I trade the kids? No, okay, I just wanted to check his head. Okay. So. A 401k. <laughs> so yeah, but, but then like Liz walks with the baby through all the carnage. She's humming Mary had a little lamb as she does. I wanted the baby to be like, come on, I'm Satan. Do some metal or something. Right. <laughs> you know. So Michael shows up at the hell hole to save Laura. She's been clinging to the wall the whole time. Don't worry. She's <laughs> fine. Sylvester Stallone holding her like cliffhanger because the yeah. ledge is right there mm-hmm. to physical hell that has a <laughs> right. ledge to hell. The yes. place, you know, you can chimney climb your way out of there. It just takes a while. Yeah. <laughs> And then we cut outside. He saves her. We go outside. We get Laura just punching the fuck out of Liz. Yeah. (laughs) Again, this like at least 65 year old woman, you know, she's like just getting the shit knocked out of her. Yeah. And explaining the problem with the movie to Liz too, being like, hey, Liz, so God's omnipotent. You can't have, you know, schemes and stuff against you. You can't have plans. All your plans are his plans. This was silly. Right. This is silly what we did here. And then the movie's like, fuck, we keep deflating our entire plot. Um, Violins. And then they have like energetic sort of like there's still suspense violin music for the nothing that now happens. Well, right. Because because then Michael's like, oh, well, I guess I I better go save the day. And then Laura's like, well, I just explained that it doesn't actually matter because God always wins. It's it's been foretold and he's omnipotent. I guess I better go save the day. (laughs) We hired the beast for a third afternoon. <laughs> it's it's right. the fucking violins. I'm doing it. So he runs back to the hellhole. All the demons are coming up. The portal's been wide open. Why wouldn't the demons have come out before? We have no fucking idea. The hole's been open yet, the whole goddamn said. time. We said we were doing the 14th. <laughs> <laughs> they got to fill the hellgate like it's a tunnel in Brooklyn under synagogue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> Same agenda. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so, but he runs to close the door. He has to fight the beast again. Oh, my God. This fight scene is so fucking funny. Okay, so remember, podcast listener, earlier how we told you that they get lowered down in the cage? What we didn't get to tell you is that before they can be lowered in the cage, there is a 
push the wheelie aperture that opens for the cage to lower. And it's very slow and it's very dramatic. So they will fight and then take turns slowly opening and closing the yes. aperture while the other one recovers. <laughs> it, again, like if this was a comedy on purpose, it is so fucking brilliant. It's just so silly and stupid because it's not. Right. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So they fight for a little while. Eventually, Beast knocks Michael down and he's like, all right, well, there's explosives right here that we established earlier. So I'll just set the explosives off. And the Beast's like, right. Why would you not just set the fuck? Fuck. Oh. And he blows everything up. Yeah. Where did you get that bomb? Like a plastique <laughs> bomb from a priest on a mountain gave that to you? What? No, no. This was the cult. They did it because they were going to close the entrance behind them. Remember? It's <laughs> they significantly dumber than sense. the thing you're thinking. Yeah, I right. can understand why your brain in a sort of need for sense and reason would go for <laughs> someone else to but no. I did need that. That's so, ruined. Are you a bird? <laughs> are we in a bad movie? So then we cut to this church service, right? Where like so, so we, we cut to a priest going like, yeah, it might seem a little old fashioned to believe in Satan, but he's very real. And then you're like, yeah, this movie is dangerous, actually, technically. So, yeah. <laughs> Just want to remind you all that we've all had a really fun, silly time today. But if I can get a little serious, several world leaders pretend to believe in this. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And then the hermit and Laura come in. They've got the Shroud of Turin. They're returning that. Did someone crumple this up super fast? Well, like I, super you know, carelessly? I was in, a, in a fucking hurry. I was in a hurry. Anyway. Maybe we just take the elastic part out and it'll be easier to fold from now on. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> and then they introduce all the priests to baby Jesus 2.0. Hello. Second coming over here. Yeah, she's wearing a blue hoodie, huh? Because she's Mary. Yeah, she sure the fuck is. Blue hoodie. Oh, and then we have to get Michael. He has to go back in angel form to hell to rescue all of the street urchin kids, right? To bring them out of hell. And they have this moment where he walks up and all the kids are there. And then I write my notes. I'm like, is he going to carry him out one at a time? Did he bring a really big net? How is this going to work logistically? <laughs> and then the movie just skips away. They don't even answer. We're the tough not going to worry, but we have a lady to sexually assault graphically. For yeah, 16. right. Exactly. <laughs> and then, okay, so we have one last scene. It's we, still not. Oh, all my notes for this are just how is the movie not over? Right. <laughs> Motherfuckers. So, yeah, now it's G little baby's second coming is six years old or so. And he's walking with Laura and the hermit. I guess the hermit is stepdad, an unofficial stepdad situation with baby Jesus now. Sure. Jesus turns some smoke floats out of his nose and then he sucks it back in and then he gives us a wink. I think that's supposed to tell us something about the sequel. That was a sequel wink for sure. And yeah, I'm for sure. fucking excited. I'm a devil conspiracy too, baby, all the way. Fuck yeah. When it's there, we'll be there along with it. <laughs> but I guess that's going to do it for our review of the devil conspiracy. Not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to dupe ourselves into coming back. So Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, after nearly a year of waiting, we're going to give friend of the show, Michael Marshall, the gift he's earned through so many prank websites. The blessing he needs after all our slander and abuse. And we'll be doing it while making fun of the river dance nut bag. Yes, we'll be watching Michael Flatley's spy flick, Blackbird. Fucking what? Okay. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 439 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our various sibling shows, the Scathing the Citation Data, D&D Minus, and the Skeptic Crowd, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Brian Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work harder and another check next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Michelangelo Jr. makes okay money on Etsy, but the shipping is too high, so not a lot, <laughs> a lot of money. The Shroud of Turin went on to keep being fake. Michael the Angel returned the hell children who had been sacrificed over several thousand years back to Earth where they could learn to use iPhones. <laughs> I think. <laughs> right.
preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2024. All rights reserved.